In this video, we are going to look at how to set up and manage groups in Schoolbox. Creating a group page gives you a space to share and collaborate with a specific group of people. It also gives you the ability to target news and calendar events to specific users. Some popular examples of group pages are sporting team pages, year level communication pages, student groups, and campus pages. To set up a group in Schoolbox, First, navigate your way to your school's resources area. This could be located in the top navigation bar, the side menu, or could be a tile on your dashboard. Keep in mind that resources could have a different name at your school. So if you are having trouble locating it, just ask your IT team. Once in your resources area, choose where you would like your group to live. Again, if you're unsure where you should create your group, check with your IT or Schoolbox team. Once you have selected the folder where you will store your group, click on Add Folder. Give your group a name, and then choose a template for your group. Your templates have been created by your school, so you may have different options. You can always change what is on the page once it's created, so don't worry too much about which template you've selected. You can also add a cover image or colour to your page. A cover image is a feature image or colour that can be added to help identify your page. Your cover image will be visible on the My Groups landing page. Setting a cover image is optional, so you can skip this part. Then untick Inherit Permissions. The next step is to set role permissions for the group. Before you do, it's important to understand how role and group permissions interact with one another. Role permissions are set here on the Create Folder page. These are general rules that say who can see or edit your group page in each of the roles at your school. Roles are large groups of people, so you may not want all users in a role to have permissions to the page that you are creating. If you select None, users in this role will not be able to see the page. Read Access allows users to see the page and contribute to any collaborative components. Write Access allows users in the role to modify and remove content on the page. Group permissions are set in the Group Manage screen. Here you can set Read, Write or Administrator permissions for each individual user, regardless of their role permissions. A group administrator can modify content on the page and have access to the group modify screen where they can manage members and change the group settings. There can only be one group administrator. So, if you only wanted to have a certain group of students with the ability to view a page, you would set the student role permissions to none and then give individual students read access in the group permissions. Schoolbox will grant users the highest level of permission. So, in another example, if you gave the teacher role read access, and then in the next step gave a few specific teachers write access to the group, the specific users you have given write access to will be able to write to the page, because that is the higher level of permission. Keep in mind that this works the other way too. So, if you give the teacher role write access, this means all teachers will have write access to the page. If you then give specific teachers read access in the group permissions, then they will still have write access based on their role permissions, because write access is higher than read access. It's important to keep in mind how these permissions interact with each other when setting them up. At the stage of creating the page, you'll just need to set the role permissions. We will get to the group permissions shortly. The last step on this page is to toggle on Create Group and then select Create Folder. This will create your group page. Next, you'll be taken to the Manage Group screen. This is where you can manage users and the settings of your group. The Add Members tab will allow you to add users to the group. Members of the group will see the group in their My Groups list and be able to receive messages about activity on the group page, such as news posts or calendar events. You can add users individually, from a group, from a role, or from a list. When you've selected your users, 
click Add Users. The Current Members tab will show you who is in the group and allow you to choose the permissions they have to the group. Here is where you can set individual permissions as explained earlier in the video. Clicking on the Settings tab will allow you to choose what type of group you are creating. A restricted group means that membership to the group is by invitation only. This means a group administrator has to add the members. Users cannot add themselves or request to join. A moderated group allows users to request to join the group, but the group administrator must accept their request. A free group means that anyone can join the group at any time. It's important to note here, if you have given a whole role no access, such as students, but you make the group free to join, this means that a student could join the free group and therefore give themselves read access. They would then be able to view the page and interact with any collaborative components. So if you really want to keep a group private, you should set it to restricted. The force follow option enables you to force notifications on the group members. This means they can't turn off notifications for the group. If you have created a moderated group, as the group administrator, you can approve or deny members in the waiting list area. Once you have set up your group, you can start working on your group page. To access your group page, use the breadcrumbs menu. You can now populate your group page with components and content. If you are the group administrator, you can return to the Manage Group screen by clicking the three-dot menu and then Manage Group.